All right. Uh, this is the second episode of the parents teaching. Last week I did the the first teaching, which I was teaching parents. And I realized that most parents didn't listen to the teachings because they'll be saying we are parents, so we know everything. So what can you tell us? <laughs> but if you listen to these teachings, you realize that most of the things that I'll be teaching here, you will be not even aware or having any idea those will be some other ideas. Maybe you will be probably ignoring, thinking that they don't even matter, they don't even contribute to you being a parent. So, in this teaching, I'm specifically talking to African parents, the errors they make. It's so painful that we grew up that way. Most of us, we grew up estranged to our parents. Whereas, under normal circumstances, the person who must be closer to you must be your parent. But our African culture taught us that there are things you can't talk about to your parent you have to go to an auntie so that system of making your parents too sacred to an extent that you can't talk to them about sensitive things it's a problem somehow that caused uh, that caused the parents and their children to have a certain gap to an extent that children have things that they do that their parents will never know. That is why you are always killed by surprises. You just hear that your child is pregnant. But when she lost her virginity, which is something that a parent who is very close to the daughter can notice, you can notice it. A person, a parent must be, do you know that us as guys, us as men, we can able, we, can, we are able to identify a person who is sexually active. Of course, we can miss some at some point, but you can really look at a person and judge if she is sexually active or not. Or you can talk to a person without her having to tell you that I once slept with somebody or I'm sexually active. A conversation can clearly tell you that ah, this person is a pachina. But the way African parents are very far to their children, the way they push away their children, the, the, they, they become like the papas of our generations who put themselves far from the congregation, whereas the, con the congregation is supposed to eat from their spiritual fathers. But they are very expensive to approach, they are very expensive to have time with them. Sometimes you have to pay. This is, is, this is how, how the situation is between the African parents and their children. The relationship is very... It's, it's a closed relationship whereby a child prefers to speak to strangers or ask other people rather than the parent. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 15, it says you can have many mentors or many instructors in Christ but only one father. For I became your father when I gave birth to you through the gospel. Therefore, be my followers as I follow Christ. Therefore, I urge you to follow me because I follow Christ. So what Paul was trying to say, he was saying to the people who follow him, 
that our relationship is that of a father and the children. So you must follow your parent, whatever the pattern your parent works with. This is what you must follow. Meaning that a, a parent is a teacher to the son or a daughter. Whereas our children are learning things from other people rather than us. This is how African parents are. They want to be feared by their children to an extent that when they come home, everybody must be silent. If you are not sitting properly, you must make sure you look at yourself and begin to, to behave. Whereas white people or let me so, say Europeans, let me not be racial here. Overseas there, children celebrate when their parents come home. Because they, they, they know that there is a, a way they are spoiled by their parents which can create a good bond. But you, you are like a cat. to the rats and the rats are your children they celebrate the moment you say goodbye I'm going to work and the way you say goodbye to them you leave a warning I'm going now I don't want to hear that you did something I don't want to hear hey, 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 hey. you know that kind of a thing whereby a parent is going to work but he is already leaving a bomb of fear into the children I don't want to, to hear that you did this but Europeans, when they are going out, they hug their children. Then they kiss them. They are trying to create a good relationship so that when they are talking to their children about sensitive issues of life, they can listen because they love their parents. But you, when your child is alone, he enjoys more. The moment you say you are going, he checks properly if you are truly gone. Then he begins to do some other things which you don't want because he doesn't respect you. He is scared of you. So parents must work to make sure that they install respect and love. Not fear. African parents are not The Bible says, honor your parents. Not fear them. You must honor them. So when you honor a, a, a person, you listen to what he says or you listen to what she says. Not because you are scared, but you honor. But most of the African parents are hated by their children. Once they are out, their children celebrate. Once they are in, they will begin to tell, they will begin to tell each other, hey, daddy is around. He, he, he. They will begin to run, run around, you know, taking other things. Because they know that daddy is a certain way. He speaks, Mama is a certain way, she speaks, which is very rough and scary. Fear if this problem that you will be eaten by surprises. They will, be, they will bring you the shock. Because you know what? Children who fears you have a problem of being disobedient when you are not there. Then they pretend to be, to be obedient when you are available. When you are there, they pretend like they are obedient. Yet when you are not there, there are a lot of things that you don't want that they do. That is why when you come, they begin to tell each other, mama is around. And when you come, they don't run after you. No, they, they go to their bedrooms and pretend like they were studying. Whereas other people, once they, they, they their children hear the, the, the sound of the car, they run to the gate to welcome mama, to welcome daddy. Because sometimes daddy brings some presents, sometimes mommy brings some sweets, but you, there is nothing like that. Did you eat pop? You, you didn't eat pop? Yeah? You ate pop, so, so what do you want? Sweets for what? Just one round for sweet to you is something that, you, that, that, that can't happen. It's a miracle. Pocket money is very rare. When last did you give your child money? I was speaking in a service last Sunday. I was saying most parents are the killers of their children. Their children are victims because of the way they are treated, especially the girl child. 
Like, you know, when you are growing up at school, your parents, you act like you never went to school, you never faced the situation, situations as a, a student. When you go to school there, you see other children of your age, and sometimes their homes will be like your home. They, their parents are not even rich, but they'll be bringing lunch boxes full of food, you know, those chips, and they'll be having some money to buy some things at school and the only person who doesn't have that is your child and in, all this happens not because the parent doesn't have but the parents doesn't think he, 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 he don't think it matters to give a child pocket money they will be asking you what do you need money for didn't you eat at home so it shows you it's not a matter of a parent being broke, but she doesn't see the importance of giving money to the child. Then my question will be, what about a situation whereby you are not giving your child money? Then there comes a man who begins now to provide your daughter that pocket money. Don't you see that the your daughter will begin to love this man more than you because at least this man is a provider and it's a skill of men to make sure that they approach vulnerable children and give them what their parents don't give them and talk to them about the things their parents don't talk to them then confuse them then at the same time they will be sexually abused and as a result, they will never tell you because at the same point, they are benefiting somewhere, somehow. Wicked parents who don't even, even bother to buy their children sanitary pads. Your child, a girl child, will begin to be a hustler during the school days. Where are you? I was looking at, at South Africa, like those, 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 what do you call these, these chips, those uh, kid chips, they are one rand, they are one rand, only one rand, meaning that if you can give your child 10 rand, she can buy five of those and five sweets and a lunch box in the bag with bread four pieces with ma ma margarine butter and oros or mazoe this doesn't cost any anyway this is very cheap but to african parents this is something that can't happen they will be checking they will ask you did, did you eat at home so these simple things that you you, you don't give your to your children be unlucky that there comes a guy who begins to be a provider of those things you think they are unnecessary. Your child will go. Definitely whatever that happens between her and this guy will never come to your attention because she is happy with this man. I'm telling you, uh, I, I, I was once in a certain area. I'm not telling you about this uh, uh, about this in detail I went to this place there was a little daughter who was 15 years you could see she was happy she looked happy she looked so happy then she saw that the apostle is you know is a little bit of a young guy so I think I can talk to her to him about certain things then I spoke to this girl she began to tell me some other challenges she have she had in life she began to tell me how the parents don't even care about buying her the clothes and it makes her feel uncomfortable at school of which i understood her because imagine i as a guy i grew up that way it was very difficult for our parents were poor in that condition made us to be uncomfortable especially on civil day where we, we were supposed to go to school with, we, 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 with our own clothes. To us, those days were very embarrassing because we didn't have any clothes. 
and imagine it was a girl child and 15 years old and already the body has developed to an extent that men can see the attraction in her so she told me that I buy my own clothes for me to look good I make sure that I do it on my own I said how do you do it she was now shy looking no Look, 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 looking at the floor, I said, no, just tell me. She told me, I, I have this guy, but the problem now is demanding to sleep with me, blah, 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 blah. I no longer want to sleep with, with men. I said, ah, you no longer want to sleep with men. It means that you already slept with some other men. She said, yeah, I, I used to, to have this other guy who used to supply me things. He slept with me. Please don't tell my parents. I said, so how do I address this? I said, I'll find another way, but don't tell or mention to them that I told you. I said, okay, I'll find a way. I spoke to the parents. It seems like they never responded. The next time, the child was, I am missing my periods. I asked the, you are missing your periods. Are you pregnant? She said, I'm not sure. I said, so you're still sleeping with this guy? Does your mom really know that you are sexually active? She said, my mother doesn't even know. I said, what about your father? She said, all of them, they assume that I am virgin. I said, why? Do they talk to you? What are the things that they talk to you about? She said, they don't even talk to me about anything. I said, good morning, we answer each other. When you are watching TV, when you are eating, those normal things. Because African parents, they don't have time to talk to their children. They don't want to open up, especially this, the, the, this opening up whereby you tell your child, whatever that you want, you must tell me. They don't want, because they know that children will begin to ask for things they don't want to give them. And you hide behind you hide behind poverty saying we don't have money but you know what protecting your money will give you problems because you will protect your money in the expense of your child's future which money do you want to protect you are working for this child so make sure that you are the supplier of every necessary things that she needs The girl children are being abused and are being taken advantage for simple and useless things. Their virginity is going for useless things, for zeppinex, for lollipops, for hundred runs, for maguinha, for quarter, especially in location. This is what is happening. Parents, parents, let me tell you something. If you are saying you are poor, look at the guys who are abusing your children who are sleeping with your children, look at them. Some of them, they don't even work. So where do they find money to spoil your child? If you are thinking that you don't give your child pocket money because you are poor, mind you, the people who are sleeping with your children, they don't even go to work. But they are finding money to spoil your child so that they can access their legs. So it's not all about being poor. It's all about being a proper parent who knows that sometimes you have to surprise your son, you have to surprise your daughter, so that when you don't have, she will understand what mama didn't give me because she doesn't have. There are some other parents who are stingy for life. You are telling me that you are poor to an extent that in your life you have never given pocket money to your child. That's a lie. That's a lie. You don't see it as an important thing. That is why your children are being abused all over. I think this one is going to be long. Let me talk about a few things here. Because uh, I need to talk about plenty things with this sermon. Let me skip this one. I, I just want to give one more point on the girl child. I was listening to this other audio on social media I saw I heard that a 15 year old child is now 6 months pregnant and she was sleeping with the step daddy and now the mother want to protect the step daddy and avoid to be embarrassed in the community she is now telling the 
the daughter to abort and the daughter is refusing in somebody's busy recording i think it was the daughter was recording and the mother is not even eager to to arrest the dead the step dead she is actually saying i was going to to, to make him to be arrested you can hear but she doesn't even have any plan to make sure that this crime is reported and herself she is on top of the situation trying to convince the daughter to abort the kind of parents that we have in our world in the first position you mother you were irresponsible how did this happen do you have any day that you spoke to your daughter but you don't allow any man to get in between your legs or you just shout when you hear that they are dating some people children they need to to be sat down with and you lecture them to them the the, the the dangers that comes out of many taking advantage of them sexually mothers like this they never had a chance to speak to the parent to the, to their children about these things then i said to myself there are plenty of things which contribute to the you see a number of uh, young children beginning to be sexually active at a very tender age number one is dressing 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 itself i told you of another story when i was walking i was in a mall there were there were there was this mother and a father who were walking with a daughter this daughter was wearing a serious mini skirt you know in south africa it's nothing but the mother was well dressed she was wearing a long dress and the father was also there wearing the shorts but the daughter was who looked like 15 or 16 or even 12 some other people they have big bodies but the daughter looked big but you could see that the face could she is a young girl this one so everybody who was passing by was looking back every man was passing by was looking back to check at this daughter was looking hot and the thighs were big and at the same time wearing a very short skirt so what it means is this girl was actually sexually appetizing men every man who was looking at her was imagining sleeping with her so my question is what about if all these men were given an opportunity to speak to this daughter why are these men looking at this little child because she is undressed but who bought this small dress is the mother is the father and they are walking together they are not seeing anything wrong with their daughter walking undressed so you guys what you do this small skirts and the tight jeans and the the, 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 the the clothes which exposes that your, your, your child has grown up and the pupil stage is over now. Those are the same dresses which attract men, which make sure that they draw attention to men who don't think to your children. That is why you see plenty girl child who were divinated at a younger age. They were not done so by the people of their age. No. Men who know when a girl is ripe and ready for sex they can see they can see the thighs is good to know as much as those legs are big like this and those breasts breasts are pointing to the you know to the to, to, to the top like this it means somewhere somehow she is ready one day when she is dressed like this they will just give you a comment and your daughter will respond in a favorable way they will continue greeting continue greeting until they become friends once they become friends it will obviously turn into the other side and they'll sleep with your child and your children will become they will become a woman whilst, whilst you are thinking they are girls but the problem is who it's you who, why are you dressing your children like this i have seen that african parents we, we, we train our children to, 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 to dress naked whilst they are young. 
you can see that every parent who goes to buy a skirt for her little growing child, they make sure that they buy the smallest, the short ones, and the children go grow up like that. So that is why we are having plenty problems like uh, uh, you, you know, childhood pregnancy. That is why it's it's too much in South Africa here because even at school, miniskirt is the uniform. Miniskirt is the uniform. So, once you are wearing a miniskirt, you are closer to the private party. So there is nothing uh, to, 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 to fear about. Even if you can fail to sit, we can actually see the inside. So once a person sees the inside, the brains will go far. So there are high chances of pushing our kids into unnecessary things. I gave an example of a, of a, I said there is, there is a family of, a, of buffaloes, right? The buffaloes are walking and they have a smaller buffalo. Obviously, a lion can't easily attack a big buffalo. So what a lion can do is it can look for a vulnerable young buffalo. So when you are looking at it, you will see the buffalo walking and the lion will be trying to trap the kid. Why is the lion trying to trap the kid? Because the kid is the one which is consumable. When it comes to the father or the mother, it's a non-starter. A buffalo can kill you, Mr. Lion. So this is what the parents do. You will be walking dressed and your child walking naked. And the men, they will be noticing all those changes and developments on your child. Dressing is very dangerous, ladies and gentlemen. That is why you see when a person who is dressed with loose garments, garments which are not tied to their bodies, Nobody will look at them, but the moment you wear a miniskirt, everybody will be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, ooh. Hello, sister. Hello, what, what, what? Because they are attracted by the way you are dressed. So you must dress your children properly. When you are buying them clothes, buy them clothes which cover their bodies properly. Don't expose your children to dangers. Your child. And even young boys, they are being raped. They are beginning to be sexually active at a tender age, but because nobody cares, they think that uh, uh, boy children, male children, don't even matter. We, we, we've we been there. We met woman. I remember that there was this uh, auntie who worked uh, uh, at our place. My mother was working in Kariba. So she left this other auntie, she was, we were calling her auntie, but she was working for us. I don't know if my, my sisters remember the person that I'm talking about. So this person was working for us as a maid because my mother was not available. So she used to say, do you know how to kiss? And I was a primary kid. So my answer was obviously no. She said, come, let me teach you. So she would kiss my lips like Mwah. But to me it was not good. Then she continued, I think about three times. Then I told her, mm -mm, I don't like this. Then at one point, she called me naked and told me to put Vaseline by his back, by her back. I went inside. She was facing the other side, giving me the back. I said, okay, it's fine. I took the Vaseline. I began to rub her back. I said, I'm going. She said, no, you're not yet done. What about the legs? Ha! Huh? I said, the legs? Then I saw her turning to me. When I saw her naked like this, my, my heart began to beat. And luckily, there was something like on the door, like hey, somebody entering. Then she was very quick to push me. Go, 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 go. Then I went rushing. Then there was nobody. She never called me back. And this aunt didn't last. 
she died because of HIV. And she tried sometimes to push me to an extent that she wanted to sleep with me. Imagine what she wanted to try to do to me. I would have been HIV positive, not because I did something, but somebody abused me because I, I, we were only two and plenty of people will be at school, other, other, will be at, other people will be at work and I with the aunt only at home. And it's happening to plenty male children. It's not right, no matter she, he is a male or he is a boy, he mustn't know anything about sex whilst he is young. Everything must go according to time. Because once your child goes to school with a sexual mind, you will lose focus at school whenever. That is why you see there are some children who are very terrible when it comes to women at school. They love women like nobody's business. You wonder what got into them. Somewhere, somehow, they met a woman who abused them. And they took that one as a way of life. They begin to be sexually active at a very tender age. Therefore, their lives won't even last. At a very young age, they will die because of diseases. I pray that you begin to protect your children, no matter he is a, a guy or he is a girl. All of them, they need to be protected. Get closer to your children to an extent that they feel free to tell you whatever they go through. Whoever approaches them, they must tell you. Okay, let me just read the verses here. The Bible is saying here, discipline your children and they will give you peace of mind and will make you glad. This is Proverbs chapter 29 and verse for verse 17 proverbs 29 verse 17 he says discipline your church your children and they will give you peace of mind and will make you glad in the future so what this means is not only prayers help our children but sometimes we need to discipline them and when we are disciplining our children we are not telling them to we are not beating them only we are teaching them to be good people we are we are having time to lecture to them good and bad things. So if you want to see your child in the future giving you peace of mind and making you glad, discipline them. Teach them how to be good people and teach them to stay away from bad things. But plenty of parents, they don't have this time with their children. Even in Proverbs chapter 23 verse 13, it says, do not hold back discipline from the child. Although you strike him with a rod, he will not die. This one is telling you, you must discipline your child even with a rod on his back. Sometimes when they do wrong, you don't beat them every day. Because when you beat them every day, they become used to that system. Sometimes when you teach them, you teach them, you teach them, they are not listening. Sometimes use a rod, beat them a little so that they can feel the pain of being beaten. That they may know you are serious about a certain thing that you don't want. If you keep on entertaining your child doing wrong things, I, I have some I, I grew up with some people in our area their children were untouchable even if they do anything wrong and they are beaten the parents would come after those people don't touch my child it's I we have a duty to touch my child of course you can feel like you have a pride because this is your child but as I'm telling you those people get it that way we had loose discipline because a person with good discipline, she, she, he is scared to do something wrong at his own house. How come can he, how, how come can he go to the other people's house and do such things? And we had children like those in our areas. They were going to other people's houses and do wrong things. And when they are beaten there, their parents would come with them, shouting at people. And to their children, they would go home and say sorry. And right now, if you look at those people, their lives are miserable. And the, the parents don't even know that whatever they were doing to these children as they were young contributed to what their, who, who, what their children are today. Musajai Zavana, Wanava Zizay, Wanava Discipline, Discipline, Akuskurova. Disciplining is not only beating, disciplining is making sure that you give your children a good teaching in a good way, that they know. 
to do what is right and to desist from what is wrong. Number, I want to give you just nuggets for parents. Good parents do not curse their children. Because the moment you keep on saying bad things about your children, they will become like that in the future. Remember, you as parents, you have, a, you have power to speak good things or bad things in the life of your children. And those things happen. No matter how much angry you are with your children, you must learn to be a parent because most of the problems that your children are facing right now and you are praying to God to remember your children, it's you who caused them because you cursed them the moment they did something wrong of which they did some other things because you were not disciplining them. The moment they began to show signs of indiscipline, you cursed them. You shall never do this. You will never prosper. You will never do this because you will never... Ah, 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 ah. Mama, you forgot that you are the ones you, who trained your child to be like that. Now whatever you trained them is coming against you. You are cursing them. Then when they are cursed, you are going to God to pray for your children. So what are you doing? So don't waste your time praying to God because you, you have the power. Remember, there was a um, Esau and Jacob. Right? They were blessed by their father. Isaac by words especially Jacob he was blessed by words but whatever the parents said is what the child became so whatever you speak with your mouth with your child you will die a foolish man you will never prosper everything that you are saying there will automatically become something that is tangible in the life of your children don't be short-tempered, parents. You must have a, a, a very strong heart like a parent. The parents that I know, they have, they, they, you know, their hearts, they are very strong. But the parents of our generation, they can easily kiss their children. And when things are going bad in the lives of their children, they are crying to God now. You are crying to God about the cases that you vested on your child. Why? Take your children sometimes. Put your hand upon them. Father, I pray that you bless my children. Every case that existed in my life must never be upon them. Anything that I did wrong must never be part of them. May you judge me according to my sins and forgive them everything that they did. But the children of our day, the, the parents of our days, they case their children. Anything that the children can do. Of course, what can you expect? A child can do anything. Like what God did to us. He knew that we are very sinful and we are wrong. And he forgave us on the cross. With everything that we did deliberately, he still forgave us. Why? Because he knows that we are children. When you have a child, you must know that he is or she is a child. You must stop guessing your children. There is a thing which is called a parental blessing, which is in you. Remember Noah cursed his child who saw him naked and loved and, and invited the, brother, the brothers to see. And that child was cursed forever, in the, even in the generations to come. But Noah, I want to ask, when you are seeing your child struggling in life, are you going to be happy? So why is it in, after your drunkenness, you are cursing these children? Don't curse your children. Don't talk nonsense to your children. Bless them every day. Pray for them every day. A parent doesn't curse. Because a parental curse can destroy somebody's life forever. You will die a foolish man. From today onwards, I want you to reverse any case that you said upon your child, no matter what she did, no matter what he did. Otherwise, the prayers that you are putting to God, God is saying, but what do you want me to do here? It's you who cursed. So what do you want me to do? The Bible says, honor your parents so that all things can go well with you and you can live long. So there are two benefits we can get from our parents. Number one, things can go well with us and we can live a long life. That is why your children are, are dying at a tender age. It's because you have been cursing them for a long time. Because, okay, I understand they did wrong. I understand they don't take care of you. 
But why is it you are crying when they die? You are the one who is casing them for what they are not doing to you, right? It's right. I understand you. But if you don't want them to die, don't curse them. Because you are the, after cursing them, then the manifestations of the curses are now visible in their lives. You are the one who is complaining again. So you are not a parent enough. Because a parent, a, a, a parent who is a proper parent can never wish to see bad things in the life of his kids, no matter how much bad they are. God loved the world. And he gave it his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him must never perish. We were destined to perish. And it's God who had cursed us before, remember? Remember everything that happened to, 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 to Adam. It's God who said it. Because of this, this will happen to you. Because of this, this will happen to you. Of course, we, 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 we had made something wrong. We had sinned against God. And he began to pronounce bless, uh, cases upon us. And those cases lived with us for generations up to now. And those cases can be broken. Uh, 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 they can be broken only by God. That is why he sent Jesus to make sure that whoever gets into the, into the Lord Jesus, every curse which was upon Adam will be replaced by the, the blessings in the Lord Jesus. So everybody who is listening to me here, if you curse your child, there is nobody who is going to free your child from this case. No matter which church he, he can go, you must free your children from the cases. Stop cursing your children. Unless if you will enjoy when they are struggling. Number two, give your children future. Some parents, they want to reap from their children, but they never gave them life. You just gave birth and your children began to live like animals. You never created good platforms for them to make money. You never sent them to school. You never cared about their education. Right now, you have plenty of children who are not even financially stable. And you are expecting them to take care of you. The moment they got married, everything was down for them to an extent that they are failing to take care of their families. And I'm talking to the parents who are still, real, who, 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 who are still growing their children right now. If you don't invest in your children's future, you are going to be like somebody who never gave birth. Because your children give back what you gave to them. The investments that you make in your children are the investments they will give back to you. The results that you see on your children are the things that you planted in their lives. Otherwise, if you never planted in anything in them, they will become poor. That is why you are having plenty of children who doesn't even have a future. And you are complaining, they don't even take care of me. Ah, you forgot that these people are not even working proper jobs. They, they, they were not even educated. You were just increasing children, increasing children. School, tololo. University, tololo, college, tololo. You are looking at other people who took care of their children and sent them to school and invested in them. And the only thing that you were doing and the only thing that you were concentrating on was giving birth after birth, child after child, child after child. But did you inv in invest in these children? You never. So, what are you talking about? You must check your children. Sometimes you are busy kissing them because you're saying they are not even taking care of me. But you forgot that when you visit them, the food that you eat there is very poor. They are struggling even to pay the rentals for themselves. They are struggling to pay the, 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 the school fees for their children. They are poor. So if, if you don't invest in your children right now, if you don't give them the future, they will die like that. The Israelites become, became a rich nation because Abraham was promised something by God and he was given the promised land. So when they were going to the land, they were going to the land which was promised to their father. So they were living in the benefits of their father. And what are you living for your child? Tololo. All, all, all you know is sleeping on your bed with your wife and giving birth to plenty of children. You don't even care about their future. And when you see people investing in, in sending their children to school, to you it's meaningless. 
A good parent will realize, good, no, I need to give something to my son to do. At least he may be a welder. At least he may be a mechanic. At least he may be a teacher. He may be an accountant. She may be a lawyer. Something that may give you a life in the future. But your child grows up to an extent that she doesn't have anything to do. Anything that she's going to do, she will do it on her own. Don't be a wicked parent. Give life to your children. Invest in them if you want to reap out of them. You must create platforms for your children to make a living. Whatever good things that you see in them, the potential that you see in them, invest in them and you push them towards those things so that when you are tired of working, your child will provide you. Some other children which you are seeing taking care of their, of their parents, they have extras and your child doesn't even have because he never went to school. He doesn't have any profession. He is not even either a mechanic. He is he is neither a teacher. He is neither a nurse or a doctor or anything. Those people you are saying are taking care of their parents. Look at their lives. And they make sure that if a child fails in school, they take them back. I have another guy I know in our area where I grew up. This Mdala made sure that he sent everybody to school, no matter how much you are going to fail, by fire, by force. And monthly you see the children coming back to see their father, holding some paper bags of grocery. I saw this happening. And some other parents who never invested in their children, when they fail school, they would leave them. Up to now, Invest in your children if you want to reap out of them. Don't relax too much. No matter she is a girl, she is a boy, whatever. Invest in your children. Number four. This is what's number three. Do not choose your children. Do not choose your children. I have seen this especially... You remember there is this story of uh, Esau and Jacob. Esau and Jacob. Jacob was loved by the mother. Esau was loved by the father. So when the father was about to die when he was old, he wanted to give the blessing to the son he loved. So the mother heard the father talking to the son that he loved, telling him to go and prepare something. That the father was supposed to eat and the son get the blessing then the mother go went and told the son that he loved and he told him to go and also prepare and the mother told the son called Jacob to do what the father had told the son Esau so the mother killed a sheep and put it on the sun and put the, 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 the what do you call the, the sheep skin on the sun that he, she loved. I hope you're understanding me here. I'm saying there are two sons here, Esau and Jacob. Esau is loved by the father. Jacob is loved by the mother. But if these are your your, your, your children together. Why are you loving the other one? And not loving the other one? So the father is old now. is about to die. He said to the son. He loves Esau. Go and find me. The meat that I love. And cook it for me. And you come. And I will bless you. And the mother is hearing. Then the mother goes to the son that he loves. Jacob. And he tells him to take one sheep. Or was it a goat? And he killed it. And he prepared the meal that the father wanted. And because the other son that the father loved was hairy. So the mother had to make a replica for that. So that goat or sheep which was killed, the skin was taken. Then was put on the son, Jacob, who was not hairy. Then he cooked the food and went to the father. The father was blind now. He couldn't see, but at least he could feel the skin. This is my son who is hairy. So when the father went, 
when the, the son went in and the, and the father said I want to touch you to make sure that it's my son whom I love he touched the skin of the sheep and the father said yeah this is my son then the father ate the food and began to bless the wrong son and the son ate the, the father ate and the son was blessed and when the original son came the blessing was gone he tried to negotiate the blessing was gone and that caused an enmity between this the first son and the second son but these guys were twins were from the same home but because of the parents who are separating them this one loving this other one they were no enemies right now as we are speaking there are parents who can choose their children to an extent that the other ch children can see with mama love this one more than me I've seen this plenty of times. You can only see even you can even see it when you are not part of their families. You can see the way they dress the girl child and the way they dress the boy child. The girl child they make sure that they decorate her like a flower. They buy her everything. They make sure that they change the hairstyle every month clothes they buy every month anything that is in fashion they buy they make sure you, you can look at the, at the girl child you can say yeah these ones are rich go and check the boy child <laughs> why do you have to choose if these children are all your children and you are causing them to be bitter and that way once they can see good mother love this one more than this one you are you you you, you are destroying the bond between you and your children that is why you and your your, your male children you are not good friends you're not good friends because you are choosing especially this one we, we, we thank god for this one it was better because the mother had no choice he had two sons she had two sons so she is there was no genderism here obviously if there was a girl obviously she was going to love the, the, the girl this is what african parents do they forget that nine months this boy was in their two wombs it doesn't matter and the fathers love the men too much and the the, 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 the boys they have this disadvantage that the whole money is given to the mother and they are loved by the fathers so the fathers they don't buy clothes clothes are bought by the mothers so when the mother is buying they will tell you the the clothes for, for for the girls are very cheap and for guys are very expensive that doesn't matter no matter how much expensive it is it must be equal so i remember when you guys are you guys that's not a reason that's a rubbish reason because it's expensive so you are, you, are, you are disadvantaging him because he is a boy no matter how much expensive it is if you are buying for your girl child also buy for your boy child simple the moment you begin to choose your children slowly you are investing in anger hatred there is a verse which talks about that let me let, let me look for it fathers do not embitter your children or they will become bitter which is Colossians chapter 3 verse 21. There are bitter children out there. They are bitter children. But you know what children what children do? What children do is this. They don't have a choice. Sometimes they can't show you good. They don't like you. But you can really see sometimes when you are in the dining room, they just come and greet you. How are you, daddy? Then they go. They don't want to be where you are. They can't spend 20 minutes sitting with you. It's a sign that they, they are not happy with you. There is, there is something that you do which is not right. You must study the signs on your children. You must study. Why is it you, 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 you can't have a, a, a longer conversation with, you, with the child you gave birth to? There is something that you, that you do wrong. And the children, they, they, they can't even say, we are not allowed to say anything bad against our parents but to us they tell us pastors hey, my mother love this one my mother love this one don't choose your children you feel sorry for for for, for the male children when they are growing up they will be not having clothes at all they will be wearing like street kids 
when the mothers are busy decorating the girl children like flowers you are separating your children like what the, 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 what Jacob and the, 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 the mother did and now they begin to, to Jacob didn't have any plan of stealing the blessing but the mother is the one who made the deal because he, he, she knew that the father liked the other son more than this one and at the end of the day Esau and Jacob were enemies why? because of the parents choosing them as a parent, you can't be on a, oh, 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 on a seat discussing other children with your other children. That's totally wrong. Because you cause them to be enemies. No matter how much wrong your other child is, it's not your duty to speak about, uh, about it to the other child of yours. That's not it. That's wrong. We have other better people to talk about. To talk to about these things, not your, your, your other child. And uh, some of you, when the other child is making it in life, you begin to love them and put them on top of all situations. And those who are poor, they become useless. Even on meetings, even on gatherings, even on funerals. It can be visibly seen with the mother loves this one with, with his money. I thank God for, for the spiritual parent he made me. Ah, I myself, I have rich children who follow me. I have plenty of them, more than 100. That I know what he she is financially stable but i'm not pushed by that i love people as people i don't choose what you have money so you are the one who is always given attention there are some people who don't have money at all i give my hundred percent attention but you the only child you give uh, uh, attention to is the one who have money then there are other parents they don't even care there are other children they hate i don't know for what reason no matter how much good things they do they don't appreciate them. But this other child they love. Any single thing that, they, that she can do, they will sing about it to all the relatives. And they will tell all other children, she have done this to me. But the other child, why are you choosing your children? So when you see your children not uniting, it's you, the parent. Let one of the days the richer one see you having a longer conversation with the poor one, attentively, with full of love. No matter, parents, no matter how much your child is not good at school, sometimes he is not good at school because he's, he's, he's good at rugby. He doesn't need school, that one. He's good at football. He doesn't need school, that one. Remember, Cristiano Ronaldo doesn't even know how to speak English. Ah, Cristiano is good. I'm talking about this one. Lionel Messi. He doesn't, he doesn't even speak English. Cristiano Ronaldo is the one who speaks English. English for what? Does English play, play football? No. So he doesn't matter, matter Mr. Messi. Play your, 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 your football with use, using legs and speak your native language. But when the parents see that the other child is intelligent, the other child is not good. That's wrong. Must not hate your children or choose them. Don't choose your children. Then, on this one, it's a very serious problem. I've seen children who feel like parents love Ningi, love this one, not me. He, that's a very serious problem. What kind of a parent is that? Who can choose the children who were in nine months in the stomach? The children whom you sent to school. That's totally wrong. That's totally wrong. Uh, don't discuss your children with other children because they are not their children they are not above them they are the same so there is no need for you to discuss other child with other child with the other one and the, the other nugget is you must respect your children where some other parents they act foolish in front of their children they do plenty foolish things that they lose value in front of the children especially single mothers the way you do things in front of your children are so humiliating every day you will bring a new boyfriend and sometimes you'll be living in a one room with your child and these children they will be seeing you getting into the house with a man closing the door and coming out later why can't you respect your child 
follow me as I follow Christ because I'm your father. This is what Paul said. So you want your child to follow what? What are you teaching here? Single mothers, men after men, men after men before your child is not a good thing. You must respect your children. Especially even some other women. I've seen who, like single ladies who, who lost their marriages or who were impregnated and left like that. They change. They begin to, to, to dress naked always. And your children, when they are looking at you, they don't know where to look at because your breasts are outside, your legs are outside, everything is exposed. They will be staying with you because you are their parent, but in their mind, they will be saying, ah, my mother is a fool. They might not say it, but deep down, they know that you are a fool. Respect your children. Dress well in front of your child. Do well in front of your child. How many foolish things have you done to your child? Because you know some of you, as we are speaking right now, you are dating younger, younger boys than you. And how does your, your, your children feel that my mother is, 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 is dating a, a very small girl? Don't be a foolish parent. Respect your children and act like a, like, like a big person and a matured person. If you want to earn good respect from your child, that is why you see most of the times when they go out, when they are now living their lives, they won't respect you. You'll be saying, hey, I took care of my, 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 my child. I took care of this one, but he doesn't even respect me. My guy, there are some other things which you were doing which, you, which made you lose respect from your child. Because when the time you were taking care of him or her, he couldn't say anything because he wanted your protection. He wanted your supply. But now he is out of that. That He can he simply show you that mother man, you are a confused woman. Never do the prostitution stuff that you do and just leave the prostitution because you are a Christian woman. Never do your boyfriend, your dating stuff in front of your children. You will lose respect. Because do you know that these children, they don't even think that you guys, you have feelings. They will be respecting you as their mothers. But you are, you know what? These things of showing your children how you operate in the areas of relationships is very wrong in plain ways. Your child must never know about your rubbish things unless you are now married. Unless you are now in a serious relationship, it want to grow to a level that you want to, 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 to be remarried. Not every day another boyfriend. Every day another boyfriend. Every day another boyfriend. That is why your children have lost respect with you. Respect your children, single mothers. Dress well in front of your children. That's rubbish. Then the last nugget. Wanababa, the fathers. You are causing serious damage to your girl children because you are not having time with them. You are giving them time with failures. Woman, when it comes to girl ch children, are failures. How can you trust a woman to mentor your girl child? When he ate, do you know that a woman will die? being on a position of being cheated by men no matter how much wise she is there is always a man who can play with her mind and still cheat on her i have seen oh, that's why that's why you can see a, a woman having five children with different fathers then you ask yourself how come and she looks beautiful and intelligent how come her intelligence nev never worked to an extent of understanding good you don't play with men this way otherwise they will give you children and run there are ladies they will never know anything about women except when they operate with the apostle like me who teach them secrets about men I talk with Jesus women don't know anything about men where so if you leave your girl children operating with the the mothers and you'll be saying no and then I will deal with the 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 the, 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 the male children my guy, plenty of children who operated with the mother, they, they, they got pregnant with their mother's advice and everything. 
Be close to your children and talk to them. And tell them the secrets of men and the dangers of men and the lies of men and their instruments of convincing women. But our African parents, it's very rare to see a father being close to a daughter. Ah, that's rare. The father will be putting the male child close always. That is why you are having nine children. Because you were looking for a male child. When you first had a, 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 a girl, you said, okay, I'll try the second one. Maybe I can have a, 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 a boy. You try the second one. 30, 40, 50, 60. If God didn't, had not given you a male child on the ninth, you were, you were even going to give baby to 20 children. That's a big problem. It means that when God gives you this son of yours you were looking for, the whole attention will be taken away from these girls. And when you take away your attention from them, boys will give, begin to give them attention. The attention, do you really know that the love that the girls get from men at first, when they are growing, they think that this is the love from their parents. That is why the, when the parents, they get confused, they feel comfortable with men. Because men, when they come to the lives of these girls at first time, they will be giving them things, providing things, comforting them, taking care. So when they feel this love, they feel like they belong to men. Where is the father to give them this proper love? The father is not available. He's dealing with the, the male child every, every day. When he comes home, he leaves up the boy. The girls are Masura say, Masura say, what a stupid father. <laughs> a father must never choose. Because sometimes the, the, the male child you are you, you, you are thinking who, 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 who protect your seed. What about if he dies early before, before marrying? What about you yourself if you die before he dies? Then you die. You don't even see the future. Then he dies before he marries. Some other things which you think are important are not even important. Once you give birth to your child, no matter she is a woman, she is a, a, a man. Take care. Love them equally. Don't choose. May your daughters be your friends. May your daughters be your best friends, your closest one, and teach them what men are. They are being given false information by men in the streets because their fathers who are supposed to give them information are not doing anything. This is my message to the parents who are out there. I have done my justice. This is my party two and I will I won't do any party three. I'm done with this. May the Lord bless you. I know that you'll be helped a lot and you've learned a lot. May the Lord help you to protect your children and give them life in the name of our Lord Jesus. To those who don't know me, this is Apostle Sean speaking from GM Ministry. J I M J I A M. This is GM Jesus in Action Movement Ministries. You can search me on Facebook. My name is Gweta Sean Duroy on Facebook. Gweta Sean Duroy. Duroy is D W E L R O Y. Or you can search as GM Ministries, J I A M Ministries on Facebook or on YouTube. May the Lord bless you. Those who would want my number, it's 0626 797 461. A South African number, 0626 797. Uh, 461 so it's plus 276267974641 may the lord bless you i'm signing out this is apostle sean pounder pizza are royal